Hello and welcome, this is going to be a playthrough of episode 0 of Pixel Art Academy. It's finally out, uh, all three chapters. Hashtag spoilers, uh, don't watch if you want to play. This is a video that you can use if you get stuck in the game or if you want to just see certain sections how this works. It's kind of like a walkthrough or a help. Uh, in the video there's going to be uh, time stamps for all the different uh, parts of the game. So the game right now is we're going to play episode 0. In this episode you pretty much learn about the game and buy it if you haven't. If you're one of backers, thank you so much. Uh, you, you're just going to be able to play and then uh, we are going to create a character with which you will then play the real game. So this is kind of like a meta game and uh, let's just jump right into it. So this is at pixelart.academy. That's the URL, um, pixelart.academy. Let's start your game. You exit the Retropolis International Spaceport. A magnificent view of the city opens before you. Armed with a backpack and a burning desire to become a pixel artist, you feel the adventure in the air. You, all right, press enter to continue. And we see Retropolis, vending machine and a backpack. And Alex enters, let's see what happens. So press enter to continue. Alex says, there you are. Wow, look at the city. Isn't it wonderful? Now we have a choice, so it's kind of like uh, point and click adventures um, where you get dialogue choices. Uh, I always want to come here. Well, you'll get to see it up close soon enough. But we should hurry up though. The last airship leaves in 10 minutes. Um, Alex leaves east. Something feels strange. You seem to know Alex, but you can't really tell from where. Yeah, I don't even can't really even tell what am I doing here. Oh, look, there's an airship flying. Uh, this is the city of. Let's look at. Uh, so you can always type "look" if you want to see the description again. So you see here, you see Retropolis vending machine backpack. Look at Retropolis. So let's see. It's the city of Retropolis, a technocratic utopia built on a tropical island. It's home to Retropolis Academy of Art. All right. So we're here uh, in the Pixel Art Academy. We're trying to go to Retropolis Academy of Art to study how to do pixel art. It's right over there. Um, uh, I guess we have 10 minutes. Let's uh, use the vending machine or see what that does. The vending machine displays a message. Welcome to Retropolis Spaceport Airport Terminal. Would you like a beverage? Kindly provided by the city of Retropolis. Um, all right, let's take some apple juice. I like apple juice. The robotic machine places a clear glass bottle under the nozzle. Apple juice flows out and as the liquid fills towards the top, a label digitally appears on the glass. Holy shit, that's some high tech stuff. Take the bottle and the machine displays. So it's like a glass thing that just now has apple juice. It says apple juice, e-paper and all that shit. This is in the future, in case you didn't know. These kind of cities don't exist um, yet. Okay, uh, you can keep the bottle, return it to the vending machine or drop it uh, one off. Um, Look at bottle. What does it say? Um, some sort of augmented glass bottle, digital ink label. It says it contains apple juice. Okay, let's drink apple juice. Drink the apple juice and feel refreshed. This is gonna help us in case we... So we have 10 minutes to get to the airships. Uh, there's different endings depending on when you come to the airship, if you make it in 10 minutes or not. And this helps to extend that window just a little bit. Um, there's three ways. I'm just gonna say that much. Um, but just because I'm gonna actually take some time uh, anyway, uh, so what else can we see? Possible exits are concourse, uh, and there's a backpack. Uh, let's go to concourse. It's gonna say, don't forget your backpack. Get backpack before you leave. Uh, now we can, and you, we also know that Alex uh, left east, so instead of go to concourse, we can also just do east. And here we go, this is the start of the video game. Here's the Academy of Art little emblem or seal, coat of seal, seal of arms, coat of arms, coat of arms, that's the one. And here we go, episode before it all began, chapter one, living the dream. So we're playing chapter one right now, there's gonna be three chapters. The airport terminal is quiet and cozy with only a few dozen people heading from airplanes towards immigration in the east. So from the terrace outside we went into the immigration, uh, into the concourse of the airport terminal. Alex says immigration is this way, and he goes east. He or she, we don't really know at this point. Um, you're just gonna say he. Uh, all these directions, you make a mental map of where you are. You can now look at the map. All right, let's look at the map. We can type map. Okay, so we see here is the concourse. On the west, there's stairs, and you can see this little WE. This is west, east, and you can use these as shortcuts to travel. We can also go down to the gates. I'm gonna let you explore it. We can also press tab to turn the map on and off. And you can just hold tab and then release to just quickly look at it. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the mini map. And it's kind of um, whatever you prefer. Do you prefer to see a mini map down here all the time? 
or do you just prefer to focus on the text and build it kind of in your own head and only look at it when you need to do it? It's kind of up to you. Um, I'm going to leave it here just in case you like more to see where we are. So let's go east and I can say, I can just type E. Uh, you line up in the queue and wait for your turn at one of the automated immigration checkpoints. So now we've arrived at immigration and there's an immigration terminal and informational message placed on the speakers. Please have your passports and invitation papers ready. You remember you have your passport in your backpack. When you're ready, locate an available terminal to validate your immigration documents. Um, all right, so um, this is a little bit uh, improved. Uh, there's a little bit of a hint that's in your backpack and you can hover over, over this one. It's gonna pre-fill a command that's useful. So instead of for your backpack, you can, you know, it's suggesting to do open backpack. So let's just click that. You can just sometimes click if you want to. I usually just write it out, but the text doesn't always match. Um, so that's why you can just see, okay, that's like a hint. Open backpack. So one of the terminals, well now we've opened it here in the top right we see what we're carrying. So we have the empty bottle, have the backpack now because we opened it. There's a passport and acceptance letter. So we can use it, so let's do use terminal. Is a bright translucent glass display as tall as you? Welcome to Retropolis immigration procedure. Papers please. Papers, I guess it wants you to show your passport. So let's do show passport. Thank you. Our systems indicate you are here to study at the Retropolis Academy of Arts. We sure are. Uh, please present your acceptance letter. Let's look at letter. What does it say? Um, every time you look at your acceptance letter to Retropolis Academy of Art, it makes you smile. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, show letter. Good. Everything seems to be in order. You will need to report to the student center at the academy to finalize your enrollment. Confirm. You and I proceed to claim your baggage. Have a lovely stay in Retropolis. All right. Uh, ending immigration procedure. The checkpoint gate opens and you pass through the baggage claim area. So we are in the baggage claim area now. You enter a small room with a baggage carousel already unloading the bags from the flight. Your suitcase arrives shortly as well. The arrivals area is north through the customs. You see, we can go north to customs. We just came from the immigration in the west. Uh, there's Alex. Um, talk to Alex. Alex says, let's hurry up. We should catch the airship before they close the airport for the rocket, la rocket launch. There's a rocket launch going on. That's why we only have that much time. Um, well, uh, okay, so let's get suitcase. Is there anything interesting in there? Hold mainly your clothes and other necessities, not really. So let's go north to the customs. The customs area is unlike anything you've experienced before. The x-ray machines automatically categorize all the items in your bags and you sign this the contents list before you pass. The way out is north to the arrivals hall. Turn back to look at for Alex. Alex enters. And he says, I need to check my bags. Go ahead, I'll be right after you. So let's keep on going north to arrivals. You're in the arrivals waiting area of the main spaceport tower. Passengers coming out through customs are being greeted by their loved ones. The way out leads southeast to the main atrium. An announcement plays on the speakers. Last call for airship passengers to Retropolis. And Alex enters. And finally, we need to get through the main tower. The airship terminal should be just across the atriums and he lives southeast um, so we're gonna go southeast and then just go across so keep on going southeast you are on the second level of the atrium at the Retropolis International Spaceport it's the main hub of the tower and leads around various departments escalators lead up and down to first and third level of the tower it's all pretty overwhelming so pretty much we can go in every direction and right now only departures and airship terminal or back to arrivals is added but later on this will actually you can go northwest east south as well and up and down so this is kind of main hub of the spaceport terminal it's pretty overwhelming and right now all we can do is go southeast so we enter the airship terminal the long hallway connects the main tower to a docking platform further southeast the doors that lead to the boarding platform are shut closed. You see an airship already in there, leaving for a trouble. So, because I narrated this for so long, uh, we missed the airship. Oh no, you hear an announcement. The airship terminal is now closed due to the rocket launch later today. Please exit through the main entrance. Oh no, should have been faster. I'll leave that to you uh, to get a better ending than this of chapter one try to look for alex but don't see anyone the hallway suddenly begins to distort Ooh, and your vision becomes blurry the announcements echo around the hall please exit your vision turns black please exit and black screen wonder what happened all right let's see you wake up inside the train carriage you were taking into the city possible exits are trans Bay center Tra train I thought we were okay train 
Excuse me. Hello, are you okay? Time to wake up. Uh, you open your eyes and realize the train has come to a stop. We've reached our final destination. Are you alright? Uh, yeah. Yes, I must have fallen asleep. <laughs> you seem like you've had quite a dream. Welcome to San Francisco. Okay, plot twist over. We're not in Retropolis anymore. We're in San Francisco. Uh, ah, yes, and the conductor looks at you funny. Well, have a good day now. You get out from your seat. In your pocket you have a school prospectus and you remember why you're here. To find out more about the Game Pixel Art Academy. So let's look at prospectus. You have here your caring prospectus. And here you can read a little bit about Pixel Art Academy, what it is. Um, there's a trailer, not gonna play it, and just explains a little bit what the game is about in case you want to read through. Uh, let's go back. We can also talk to people that are going to explain what the game is about. So let's. Uh, we can also talk to the conductor. How oh, may I help you? Do you know where Retropper is? Retronator is. They make this game, Pixel Art Academy. This one's easy. It's right here in Soma, just across Second Street. You can see it from the park outside the Transbay Center. So it's going to be very close by. Even the conductor knows about it. Um, how do you get to Second Street? When you step out into the Transbay Transit Center, walk southwest to reach Second Street. The headquarters is right across. All right, so let's go out into the Transbay Center. You're at the newly built Transbay Transit Center in San Francisco, the new hub in downtown. There are many ways out of here, but you're most interested in going southwest to return your headquarters on Second Street. So this is the Transbay Center. It doesn't really exist yet in real world. It's being built right now, uh, but the game happens just a little bit in the future, probably like year 2020 when this is already built, uh, because I figured I'm gonna probably be developing this game for at least two more years before there's a significant thing and it just makes sense that uh, some of these things are already built so it's going to stay fresh uh, and relevant a little bit more plus a little bit more sci-fi i love these buildings let's go southwest you find yourself on second street in san francisco companies such as linkedin and zipcar have offices here as well as retronator retronator headquarters holds a cafe store gallery and a co-working space it's all very enticing and inviting you to go in you see retronator hq uh, is the headquarters where Pixel Art Academy and Retronator magazine get made and look at the featured artist sign it says through the glass front of the headquarters you can see a sign announcing the current featured artist you can go inside to look at the artwork so let's go inside you can just type in and there we go that was end of chapter one we are now in chapter two Retronator headquarters the cozy cafe has a handful of tables with artsy folks occupying most of them the north wall displays a selection of artworks from the current featured pixel artist. In the south there is a self-serve bar and burras carefully decorated workstation. Passageway connects to the co-working space in the west and there are big stairs heading up to the store. And you see, so we see the featured artworks, we see Sarah Burrow, aka Burra, and there's also a map of San Francisco. And we can see the exits are, we can just do this, we can go up to the store and west to co-working. And we can go out back to the street if we wanted to. All right, um, let's uh, let's just talk to Burra. Let's see what she has to say. Burra says, "Ready to save your game? Yes, let's do this. Great. Please choose any of the IDs to sign in. Basically, saving your game means um, you create an account for the game for Retronator. And great, please choose any of the IDs to sign in. It can be your email or any of the social networks. You'll be able to add other IDs later too." You reach for your wallet to present your ID. So basically, this is a sign-in screen. Um, you can sign in with Facebook, Twitter, Google, or you can create a new account if you haven't yet. I already have an account, uh, so I'm just gonna sign in here. You can switch between sign in, and create account. Um, so I'm just gonna just gonna go ahead with it and sign in. Um, and because I've already been, it's gonna ask me if I wanna if I wanna override that. I'm just gonna go override. If, you, if you're registering for a new for the first time, this is not gonna happen. But anyway, um, you can always overwrite your game. But it's just one saving per account. Burr says, perfect, uh, let me create a new account for you. Burr puts a new document folder together and after a short moment has you registered. There you go. This is your account folder with all your information. We have gained account folder in the you are carrying. You can write on the documents to change anything you want. Much appreciated. I see you already bought the game. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, go west through the co-working space and down to the basement where you can enter Lens of Illusions. Awesome, I will do that. Burra hands you a keycard. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Everyone makes that joke. People, they should know it's getting old. Um, you'll need it to validate your access to different parts of 
our headquarters. Let me know if you need anything else. So we got a key card to get around the, the folder. You store the key card in your accounts folder. Thanks, later. So let's look at our folder. Uh, here we are, account folder, and has multiple pages. We're right now on the contents page. Let's go registration. So here you can fill in your name. Um, let's just be, oh, so my name is Matei. I'm just gonna type Matei for now. Um, here's my email. You can add in other emails. Uh, and then you can click here to verify them. You should also, I think maybe even automatically, I should be sent a verification email. And here you can switch which one is your primary one. That's one we're gonna use to email this stuff. Uh, if you don't want an email, you can just change it as well. Um, and then you can also delete it. So you can just type in everything is editable like it said. There's sign-in services in case you want to later on add Facebook, Twitter, Google, all that stuff. Um, characters, I don't have any available characters. You do not have any characters. Create them, I try to need a headquarter in the game. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we need to play some little more uh, to be able to create new characters. There's my inventory. Right now I have complimentary full game access. Um, uh, so it's instead of buying, I just gave myself. So that's why it said it, I already have it. I'm kind of simulating if I'm a backer. So I have player access, I have freshman year character editor and you can see what this is access to non-essential data maps okay whatever um, and here's your transaction screens we're just gonna say what you bought if you are a backer um, how much was your backer level and the, this the inventory page is also gonna reflect that uh, here you can say it's gonna say like oh you're a backer for $70 and um, you can actually not be anonymous please check that so that you're not anonymous and then it's gonna show this name over here uh, and you can also write a little message for, I don't know, like, I love to be a backer, or something like that. Uh, there's not that much space, just like, a, or whatever. But people, and actually, let me show you actually where this happens. So let's close down. Um, and so we're going to go up to the store. At the top of the stairs, the floor opens onto a store that gives you that warm bookstore feeling. The place owner, Retro, is sitting behind a long desk that doubles as the store checkout area. Yellow walls and pixel art decal decals immediately brighten your day. Stairs continue up to the gallery and you can see bookshelves further out to the east. Alright, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, you can go up to the gallery, down, back to the cafe and east to bookshelves. And you hear an announcement on intercom. Burra says, yesterday's Pixel Daily's theme was hashtag talk show. Lumpy got a most favorite, it's 143, wonderful. So this is some of the dynamic text that happen when you walk around the Retronator headquarters. So this was actually yesterday's Pixel Daily's theme. Um, it changes every day. Um, so here's the supporters display that is behind Retro. Um, and let's look at that display. Yeah, and so here is me, kind of. I have a little bit more beard right now. And how do I look? Um, so yeah, here you can see who purchased the game recently. And you see if, the, if they left a tip, they can also send a little nice message. Every beginner needs to enroll. I agree, you should do that. Um, here's other, here's one of our backers, Mark Dingana, with the black key card. Uh, pixels already didn't happen, and here you can see where you are. I didn't pay anything, so there's 650 more people that have given more to this project than I have. Um, limited palette, unlimited possibilities. You see, this is just, it's gold. I love that you guys can uh, leave me messages. Um, so yeah, here's all everyone. Somebody paid $42. Uh, now you can also support the game on Patreon and anything you support on Patreon is also going to add up to this amount. So it's just kind of my way to show thanks for you guys that uh, are so super generous to support this project. It's like your hall of fame um, and whatever messages if you don't, if you're not in the top recent purchases, they're going to appear down here as well. Okay, uh, so here uh, if you did not buy the game, you can look at the shelves, uh, look at the game shelf. And here you can actually add things to your cart. For me, I have almost everything, except I don't have Alpha X Nightlife, so I could just buy this. Or uh, if you are a backer for, let's say, a, um, at the full game, but you didn't buy Alpha Access, but now you want to, you can look at the upgrades shelf. And then here you just, so I could just buy the Alpha Access upgrade, which has the two items that I don't have. Right now it says I'm not eligible because I only have the complementary version, but if you bought an actual version, it would allow you to buy this. So once you add things to your cart, you can look at cart. Uh, right now I don't have anything in it, but uh, our supporter Kunabi left a message saying, I'm actually really excited for this. Oh, that's so nice, Kunabi. 
Um, and, but you can talk to Retro and he will uh, be able to check you out. Hi, welcome to Retronator store. How are you? Fine, thank you. How can I help you today? And then, yeah, you can buy things. You can um, ask how to play the game. Uh, more questions about Pixel Art Academy. Uh, let's say, when will the game be released? Pixel Art Academy is not a typical game with a release date. Instead, it will be continuously in development. Over time, I'll be adding more content and improving your existing one. It's mainly just me working on it through story. So it will take a while. First gameplay episode will probably arrive in early 2018. Yes, because it's already September uh, and I know how long these things take by now. So um, episode zero is out right now and uh, it's probably going to take me a few months to get the first gameplay episode which you play with your character. Okay. So there's a lot of other stuff uh, as well. Why aren't there any pictures? That's a valid question. I know it's a bit funny for a game about drawing to be just text. Illustrations are definitely coming in the future and once upon a time there will even be a point and click interface. But while I'm building the game world, things change so much, I would be wasting my time drawing the locations. Only after things have stabilized, will I take the time to make things prettier. There you go, that's why, I'm, that's why it's a text adventure right now. My pleasure, uh, let's say that would be all. Actually, let's uh, just ask, talk to Retro, let's just ask, how do I play the game? You will first have to visit our Lens of Illusions alternate, alternate reality center. Head on downstairs, all the way to the basement. Talk to Panzer, he'll set things up for you. Okay. So here's actually, um, we saw there's an elevator button, so let's press button, let's just take the elevator down. Press the button and it glows with a cool light. You hear an announcement, oh, there's more announcements. Um, oh, somebody left, left a message, make this happen. This is service to Arts Sever. All right, after a short wait, the elevator arrives, and now you can see we can go into the elevator besides going uh, down to the cafe. Uh, let's go in. You're in the elevator of Retronator headquarters. The number pad on the side lets you travel to different four floors. Let's use the pad. And so we have, we are on floor two right now and there's all these things we can use. Uh, we want to go into the basement to Lands of Illusions. Number B1 close and the doors close. After a short wait, the elevator opens up on the basement floor. So it's changed, so now we go out. We are in the basement. You exit to the basement with a long hallway connecting to the Lands of Illusions alternate reality center in the east. Big windows along the north wall let you see into the Idea Garden where Retro designs new features. There is a small reception desk near the entrance. So the Idea Garden will be pretty much where the uh, development team will be kind of talking about stuff, especially when there's not just me. Right now there's going to be uh, just different features that you can read about and it's only for people that have Idea Garden access. Uh, you know if you're one of the backers at the with the early bird or above $70 all of you should be able to go in but right now it's not built in yet so just hold on with me to upgrade Retronator headquarters when that becomes a reality okay um, there's Panzer let's talk to him Henry, also known as Henrik Schumacher this German guy the operator a muscular man with a friendly smile greets you from behind the counter hi there how can I help you today uh, we can ask him a lot of questions about Lens of Illusions um, yes, Lens of Illusions is an alternate reality system that lets you travel to places you can't in real life. I'm just gonna try and do a German accent. I probably can't really, um, or a Russian accent usually. For example, if you wanted to learn about history, why not just travel back in time? Kind of like Schwarzenegger, I guess. Um, oh yeah, that's interesting, so you could just travel back in time. Or you could go on a journey to Mars and experience being one of the first colonists. It's a horrible German accent, I'm gonna stop. Currently, we offer an adventure into the city of Retropolis. It's a utopia built by artists, scientists and engineers where you can work on and achieve your most ambitious dreams. So that's pretty much, we've been to Retropolis and now we figure out, oh, this is just a simulate. It's, like it's like a video game simulation that we've just been dreaming about at the start of the game. So when can I start? Yeah, well, it's still very much under construction right now, but you can support the development by pre-ordering upstairs in the store. Uh, there's other things you can ask, I'm gonna let you do that. Um, and so let's say I'm here to play the game because we already bought it. Great, if you would please scan your keycard. Panzer points to the reader on the counter and you press your wallet to it. So now the keycard, oh yeah, and you can remember also the keycard, you can see it here um, in your inventory. See, it's clipped onto here. Uh, you will actually see here, it's a green card, blue key card, whatever key card you got in your backers, it should show up here. Um, this is just the default one for non-backers. 
So that's kind of a little bit of a token you can see which level you're back at. Um, it should be pretty neat. Hopefully you like it. Thank you, we need to set you up in, uh, in one of our immersion rooms. So it'll be through the hallway on your left and you mistakenly look to the right and it says your other left. It's a joke from the Matrix if you don't know. No worries, I will take you there. Panzer comes from behind the counter and shakes your hand. I'm Panzer, by the way, I'll be your operator. Follow me. And he goes east, so... There's one more announcement. Daisy, Daisy, give me your nash to do. I'm half crazy all for the love of you. Retro, you're being a little bit crazy right now. It's a space odyssey reference. They just blurt out pop culture references. You follow Panzer into a hallway of the VR center with many doors along its sides. Panzer says our facilities are where we set players up with our alternate reality system. Hope you're excited to give it a try. Here's your room. Panzer opens the door and goes in. So let's go in, let's follow him. You enter a cozy room with a futuristic reclining chair located in the middle. Here we go, just get yourself cozy and sit down. Sit down and relax into the softness of the recliner. Ah, You'll be able to play our games from anywhere at any time, but feel free to use this room if you need a place to relax when you sink in. Right now we'll get you set up with our alternate reality system. Is that like augmented reality? It's the next iteration of AR. With our system, it's nearly impossible to distinguish between real and augmented. Basically, it will seamlessly change the real world to fit with the game story you purchased, thus creating an alternate reality. Panzer hands you a watch-like bracelet, so we received SYNC. This is SYNC, a wireless transmitter that will communicate between our system and your brain. My brain? How will I talk to my brain? Ah, the tricky piece of the puzzle. The company Neurosync created a neurotransmitter that, you can, that can create or block action potentials in iron channels of neurons. Sci-fi talk. Uh, Panzer opens up his palm with a red pill on it. I hope you know the reference. This pill includes a dose of their agents. Nothing permanent. They will wear off naturally. I don't think they wear off. That's a lie. Um, the transmitters are mostly passive and send signals through without modification, but they multiplex an additional digital channel into your nervous system, which is used to control any additional firings. Your wearable your sink you have on your hand, your wearable will transmit electromagnetic signals through them to augment your perception. Okay, so that's some uh, high-tech shit um, that we can talk about uh, some other time, how that actually works. It's all, it's all thought out. It's true sci-fi technology that's totally possible. Um, trust me. Trust me, I'm an engineer. All right, ready to jump down the rabbit hole? Yes, let's go to Wonderland. Uh, buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. So Panzer gives you the pill and you drink it down with some water. It will take a few minutes for the transmitters to disperse throughout your body. Why don't you kick back and relax with a video from a library? A video? Yeah, to get those creative juices flowing. You sign up for Pixel Art Academy, right? I know you probably live a busy life, but it's good to slow down and take some time for yourself. So just relax and enjoy a movie without looking at the clock. Yeah, yeah, you're right, what do you have? So you can just decide to wait, uh, walk around the headquarters a little bit, um, or you can, let's see what we have. Uh, a whole lot of things, let me find something you'd like. Do you prefer a video about gaming or other things? Hmm, let's see, either, either, it doesn't matter. Something on the art or the text side, let's do art side, art or animation. Finally, I can try to find something more relaxing to watch or something to make you think. Yeah, I feel like relaxation right now. It's been a long day fixing bugs. Panzer thinks for a few moments. All right, I have something for you. Panzer pulls up a few videos on a tablet. I hope you chose wisely. Who knows what effect this decision will have down the line. You look at Panzer a bit perplexed. Holy shit. No, just kidding. Not kidding. Uh, all right, let's take a look. Uh, let's not change our answers. Um, here you go. I think you'll like the first one the most, but I added a couple more just in case. Panzer hands over the tablet and you look at the selection. All right, so we got videos that are a little bit on the art side and a little bit relaxing. So we have Video Game Planets, we have Minecraft Trip, we have Deadline, and Super Time for Slow Motion. Um, and so here uh, you, you can play, it's like a video player tablet. Um, so you pretty much need to spend at least five minutes watching videos. And I'm not gonna do that. But feel free to do that, they're pretty cool videos. Um, you can close down, choose another one if you want, or go back. How was that? Do you like the choice? 
Sorry, I got bored and skipped it. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, you couldn't find a better one. There's still some time to kill. Do you want to try to find a better match? I'll just wait. Okay, so you stand up from your client to kill some time. We can look at sync. Uh, it says we have three minutes left before the neurotransmitters are ready. Let's just take this time to explore our little um, headquarters a little bit. Let's use pad and let's go so we can go to the terrace the display asks for authorization but you are not a member of the patron club the elevator stays put and even if you are a patron club uh, it's not gonna it might actually it's not i shouldn't let you up but it actually might not i think about it um so this is just for you gotta have a very high level key card we can go and we can go to the residence either um, but we can go to the art studio let's go from top to bottom so let's go up now we can go out to the art studio Fourth floor of the headquarters holds a painting studio. Easels are spread throughout the space together with a drafting table by the wall. Stairs continue up into the residence part of the headquarters, but it requires key card access. So there's uh, elevator button. Alexandra Hood, which is a resident, uh, resident painter. Also Shelley enters. So Shelley is, uh, let's look at Shelley. Shelley Williamson is retro Retro's art dealer. So. Uh, she's a real person, like Alexandra here. These are some of my friends that are in the game. They, you can't really talk to them yet. Um, you will in the future, they will be doing their own stuff. Uh, and Retro has an announcement. Everyone can learn how to draw, there is no talent. Actually, I should revise that statement. I, right now, my statement is um, talent doesn't matter. Shelly also says here, Ah, these kids always forget to seal their turpentine jars. No wonder, we'll all die by 40. Turpentine is a very you should not breathe that in in the art studio you should turn it off it's one of the how do you call it? the uh, for oil paints whatever oil paints you can paint with it but you gotta close the jar anyway too too much information that you did not want to know about painting let's go down you enter a gallery with huge pixel art pieces hanged on the walls this is the permanent collection of artworks made by matei retroyan that would be me one day you'll be able to look at them but they're not coded into the game yet the halls continues to the east wing of the gallery, stairs continue up to the art studio. So let's go east. The east wing of the gallery opens up with an atrium that is shared with the art studio one story above. More artworks line the north wall and a big collection of video games sits on the shelves in the south. Tables in the middle hold interactive installations. So this is where Retronator headquarters is actually going to hold uh, different uh, events. So there's going to be different artworks displayed in the east wing of the gallery. The west gallery is going to have my permanent artworks like best of. That's all is going to be here, there. And then the east wing is actually going to have whatever. So I think I'm going to start with a Spectrum, Z ZX Spectrum event. And it's going to be real events in real time. Uh, or at least in kind of like pseudo real time that you can visit there. But it's going to be like, oh, this week or this month is this collection. And then if you come later, it's going to be another thing going on. Then there's going to be when it starts, there's going to be an opening event that is actually in real time. You can talk to people, so you can mingle. This is a live location. Um, there's Corinne Colgan. We also can talk to her. But let's. Uh, who is she? Colgan. It's Corinne Colgan, Retronator Gallery Trademark Curator. And Sync alerts you with a gentle buzz. A notification on the device says the other transmitters are ready. So let's get back down through the store. Oh yeah, there's also a bookshelves area. In the east, the open the store opens towards the building's glass front facade. Tall bookshelves line the walls, divided into sections. So you can't look at anything, but here is where you will be able to look at books, um, kind of like a recommendation of tutorials and stuff like that um, from the internet. It's going to be like a library section. It's also not coding the game yet. This is all coming up in the future. It's like play, placeholders for what's going to happen. Okay, so let's go through. There's also a co-working space. The passageway opens to a dimly lit room with a cyberpunk hacker vibe to it. Tables fill the space together with workstations for the permanent residents of the co-working space. So there's a cafe outside, this is like a co-working space. So the whole place is kind of like where you can come hang out and work on stuff. Um, and then also downstairs there's the Lance Illusions Reality Center where you can sink in to the game. Uh, there's my friend Ruben here. Also can't talk to him but let's... Aeronaut is his nickname. It's Ruben Thiessen, also known as Aeronaut. He flew into town with his Cessna 182 Skyline. So he's a pilot. Uh, he's gonna probably appear in the game. He might be a, a airship pilot or something like that. We'll see. Okay, so let's go back into Lens of Illusions, back into the room. Have a seat when you're ready to continue. Alright. Good, it's time to begin. So now that neurotransmitters have 
flew through all of our body, we took the pill, it dispersed through our blood system, so neurotransmitters are everywhere. And with our SYNC device, it can start sending pulses and it, they will dissipate around the neurons where they have placed themselves. So, Panzer says, there are two parts to this procedure. First, that neurotransmitters will be in training mode. Your SYNC device will record their alignment to a base set of impulses. Panzer administers simple visual and motoric exercises until the reading stabilizes. Very good. The system is now fine-tuned to your unique responses. The second part of the procedure will calibrate and test sending new impulses into your nervous system. Alright. Panzer types something into his tablet. Tell me, what do you see in front of you? A white rotating cube appears out of nowhere and floats in midair. Holy shit, look, there's a cube right there. What the? Hey, Mike, I think they like it. How about some more? Hell yes. This is just the... Oh, this is just the augmented reality part. Now you're ready for real immersion. Panzer deactivates the test. Um, and I'll, he says, I'll monitor your state from my control station at the reception. And he says, when you're ready, use sync device to initiate immersion. And he goes out. So now we're alone here. We have our sync. We have our little recliner. Um, and so we can just use sync. And he says, you look at your new wristwatch and it indicates you're ready for immersion. You activate it, you activate your sync device and ambient sounds turn to complete silence. So it just becomes completely silent. Clear sound like those at the start of the movies rushes through your ears and the white cube reappears. You cannot help but feel the shivers travel down your spine as dopamine floods your brain. So now you can just talk to Panzer um, through your neural link. It says, I'm ready for immersion. And says, that's what I like to hear. Hope you're sitting down because this will knock your socks off. And he says, now sit tight. The captain will greet you in the loading program in a second. And it's all white. You find yourself in an open white space extending into infinity. Two red armchairs and an old-fashioned cathode ray tube television are the only items you can see. Where does that sound familiar? You see television and Gordon Captain Morgan and a man with sunglasses speaks. Welcome to Lands of Illusions. And here chapter 2 ends and we are in chapter 3 making of a cyborg. Alright, let's, let's talk this through. Where am I? Right now you are inside a special program called the Loader. It's where we've modified the alternate reality you experience in the real world. How did you change where I am? The AR system operates at the neuron level, so just like we can use it to augment your reality, we can completely take over your perception. Your body is in Retronator HQ, but your mind is in the loader. So what kind of modifications do you do? The captain turns on the TV, showing a futuristic looking city. Do you know of the utopian city Retropolis? The place with the Academy of Art? Yes indeed, so far it has existed only in the prospectus of Pixar Academy. Yet, when you exit the loader, you will enter an alternate reality where Retropolis got formed in 1984 on an island next to the settlement Walden 14. Walden 14? Tell me, have you heard of B.F. Skinner? Let's say I'm afraid not. The captain switches the TV to show a scientist working with pigeons. Skinner was the most eminent psychologist of the 20th century, right in front of John Piaget and Sigmund Freud. You've heard of Freud, haven't you? That was rhetorical. Everyone's heard of Freud. Thanks to Skinner, the very video games you play are designed to keep you glued to your screen. Every time a monster drops some loot, it's Skinner's operant conditioning at work. But I digress. Fascinating. The TV now shows Skinner working with learning machines. Skinner was obsessed with figuring out how to change human behavior, but not in a negative, controlling way. At the end of 1940s, he wrote about a settlement called Walden II that was devoted to creating a better society through social engineering. Shows you a small village that appears on TV. Over the years, the Walden community quickly expanded to new Walden settlements. In the 1950s, they created Walden 14 on an island in the Pacific Ocean, with the goal to focus on radical automation. Alright, this sounds familiar. We've kind of been there in our dreams. The TV shows Retropolis once again. Alright, you will travel to Walden 14 and the city of Retropolis soon enough. The captain looks as though he said something too quickly. Well, unfortunately you cannot go there yourself. While you may treat this as a video game experience that you can hop in and out of, such behavior would disrupt the alternate reality of people living in it. So how will this work? 
the captain switches the TV to show a robot being constructed. You will create an alternate reality character. It will be a cybernetic organism with an artificial intelligence component, a cyborg hybrid. My character will be a cyborg? Yes, a cyborg is part human, part robot. Your neural connection will provide a human part, but as an AI hybrid, it will also have free will of its own. Alright, uh, it will have free will? Indeed. When you're not connected to the system, life goes on. Your character is quite capable to live on its own without you. You have a symbiotic link with them so you can instruct them what to do, but in the end, it's their choice to listen to you or not. Take good care of them and they will take good care of you. Alright, let's just go ahead, let's get it started. You can, there's more stuff you can ask on your own. To make your character selection, use the TV and we'll set up a symbiotic link with them. Since you own the avatar editor, you can also design a character on your own. So this is for everyone that has the full game with the avatar editor, character creation editor. The staff at the Cyber Construction Center will help you with that. Where is this center? Cyber Construction Center, or C3 for short, is a cyber and android manufacturer in San Francisco. It's in Mission Bay, south of Soma. Ask at the reception in the HQ if you have trouble finding it. Alright, so there's a bunch of stuff you can ask. Um, you can have multiple characters. Uh, how do I select one? Use the TV. Alright, thank you. That's all for now. Um, oh yeah, let's just... Uh, one more thing. Uh, how do I get out of here? Anytime, anytime you're in full immersion, either in the loader or sy synced with your character, you can always talk to operator. He can take you back to the real world or help with switching of characters. All right. Um, let's also look at the TV. Let's, there's the TV here. Uh, okay, that's... So here is where you control your characters. Right now we don't have any characters yet, but you can add a new link and there's four pre-made characters. There's gonna be more in the future. Um, so Ada is an undergrad student. There's Alex uh, who's battling an unfulfilling job. And you see all of this stuff, but we're gonna go, go through it Ang and Arya. Um, this is what all they're doing, they're a little person, but we're gonna go to the character creation studio. So here you can just link with them, add, add them to your, uh, to become one of your characters. We're not actually gonna do that, we're gonna go and create our own character. So this is if you, if you didn't have the uh, center you would use that, but otherwise we're just gonna make our own. So talk to operator. And I need an exit. Got it. Engaging disconnect procedure. All right. So we're back in the Lens of Illusions Reality Center. Let's go up and into the cafe. Let's talk to Bird. The captain said we can ask her for directions. Hey there. Welcome to Redonator. How can I help you today? I'm looking for the Cyber Construction Center. Ready to create your character, huh? Go southwest and down to Moscone Station. Take the Muni train south to Mission Bay. And then C3 is just southeast past the Chase Center. So you made uh, confusing. So she gives you a map. Here, I'll circle it for you. Here's the map of San Francisco. Here's the Retronary Headquarters. And down here is Cyber Construction Center. So we're going to have to make our way across San Francisco. And she said, go out of the Retronary HQ. Go southwest to the Moscone Center, which is here. Go down into the Muni Station. So here you can see this is the T line of Muni. Uh, also doesn't exist yet, but it's gonna exist in 2020 and then you take it all the way down to UCSF Mission Bay. There's the Chase Center. So we go southeast Down to the Cyber Construction Center. All right uh, Let's yeah back I'm sure your mental help can help you as well. Burrow winks at you and points to the tap key. So, you know, remember this Okay, thank you so much. So let's go out now, because we're in chapter 3, new things open up so we can go to Moscone or Second Day King. Let's go to Moscone, like she said. You're on the corner of Fort and Howard in the Soma district of San Francisco. The three halls of Moscone Convention Center that envelop the intersection. Game developers are rushing from hall to hall. GDC is in town, so it's at the time of Game Developers Conference. This is where it happens, if you didn't know. The cool Moscone Center, so let's go down. You are at the Yerba Buena Moscone Station at the new Muni Central Subway. The T-Line train can take you south towards Mission Bay. So let's use Muni, which is like the underground and also overground uh, subway system in San Francisco. Uh, which station do you want to go off at? And let's go all the way down to Mission Bay. Find a seat, and so now we've arrived at the UCSF Mission Bay Muni Station. University of California, San Francisco Medical Center makes up most of the neighborhood. And there's also Uber's fancy headquarters and the Golden State Warriors Chase Center. So let's go southeast to C3. We are in front of a building with big glass sliding doors to the east. 
The title Cyber Construction Center is printed across them, a little above, C3 is written in a way that resembles brain hemispheres. So we can go inside into the lobby. The lobby of the Cyber Construction Center, or C3 for short, is spacious and emits a high-tech vibe. Scientists in their white coats walk around with determination. They sign control with manufacturing lights in the north. A hallway to the east can take you to behavior setup and the stasis chamber. Alright, a lot of stuff north to design, hallway. Let's go north. There's a receptionist there and before we can walk by, the receptionist calls after you. Hi there, would you like to check in? Uh, yes, I'm here to create a character. Very well, please scan your keycard. And so you press your keycard to the detector and it gives a happy beep. Oh, welcome, Mate. You uh, actually in America they would say welcome, Matej. Matej. Um, yeah, they don't know how to pronounce my name. It's Mate. Um, you, you are the first one to head over to Design Control. Talk to Dr. Shelley there if you have any questions. Perfect, I will do that. Good day. All right, so let's go north. Uh, there's um, the Design Control area overlooks a big factory hall with numerous assembly line stations. Terminal with various design charts is available to use. And there's Dr. May Shelley. Let's talk to Dr. Shelley. She says, hello. 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 I have no idea how she sounds. Uh, there's no voice acting yet in the game, but one day. And, um, oh yeah, I was sent from right here from Retronade. Ugh, another gamer. The doctor doesn't look pleased with you, but stops from making further comment. Um, how do I create a character? I'll put it in simple terms for you. Use the number one, use the terminal to design the visual features. If you have any trouble, complain to the UX department, not to me. Go number two, go east to behavior setup. The terminal there will sync with your brain if there's anything in there. Very condescending. And you can adjust any situational aspects of your character. Three, continue further east to the status chamber. That's where avatars wait for deployment. Activate it with your sync device, and our field team will deliver it to Retronator. Okay, keep going east and do something in each room. I got it. Aren't you a smart cookie? Okay, you can also ask her how the cyborg works and how you sync with them, how all that works, but let's just go ahead. Use the terminal. So here we're in the terminal. It gives a little uh, disclaimer. Agent design is in early prototype stage. Few avatar parts are available and things will change later on. So this is fresh new addition in chapter 3 where you get to create your character. So I'm logged in. Please select an agent to work on or create a new one. So let's create a new one. You can give it a code name. So my character is known as Retro. Uh, you can choose pronouns, feminine, masculine. Uh, so he, she, you know, she, her, or he, him, or neutral is uh, they, them. Uh, let's go masculine because I'm a guy. Um, I identify as a guy. So we have the color. color, have all different colors. You can see a preview down there. I go with red, darker. And now you get to create the body and the outfit. So this is a disclaimer. There's pixel nudity in here. If you don't like to see pixels, naked pixels, probably you should look away. Um, you can create a new body design. Have head, arms, legs, and the torso. Um, let's start with the head. And there's some pre presets. Um, actually, the, the the color of the skin matches. Let's go back. The color of the skin matches. Oh yeah, um, body. The color of the skin matches the here we can set the skin color so i'm super white as you can see uh, so i'm gonna go white first um let's get ahead these are pre-made heads but you can also create a new one uh but i can just start with one of them that looks kind of like me uh when i had blonde hair actually i don't know does it not really let's, let's just go there you can choose one and then modify it um uh, to change it so let's take away the hair i don't really have hair uh, the shape of the head we can replace with the big one and there's eyes look quite all right I think so yep kind of hazel and there's also there's no hair hair behind if you have long hair we're gonna show up behind the player well I do have facial hair let's put in some facial hair um, let's do I have I right now I have quite a beard let's do the quite a lot of beard and then done and what color beard is it kind of Kind of reddish, probably something like this. Yeah, this looks about right. Maybe my eyes we can do them just a little bit brighter. Yeah, I guess this is hazel. Yeah, something like this. Um, 
okay, there's no glasses yet, unfortunately. So next you should do the torso. Let me show you what happens if you do the arms first. Um, just do different arms. Uh, yeah, there's it just there's no torso yet, so it just looks funny. So let's do the torso first. Uh, and there's different ones, so there's different body parts, and there's uh, androgynous parts, there's um, female, male, and there's also the neutral. And you have ectomorph, you have endomorph, and you have the mesomorph body types with different levels of um, body fat and uh, muscles. So let's just create one from scratch. You can start with one of these as a preset. And I just want to show you how to do it from scratch. So um, let's go actually from top to bottom. Let's do chest first, and we're gonna start with. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty skinny, so I'm gonna just do ectomorph. Uh, abdomen. Uh, I work in gymnastics. Ectomorph is like the skinny, tall type of people, which I am, but I also work out, so let's put some six pack on there. Um, and then the groin, you have the wide or the narrow, and if you're ectomorph, it's gonna be narrow. If you're mesomorph or endomorph, you're probably gonna go wide. It also depends on, well, yeah. Um, so this one's gonna match, otherwise it wouldn't. Like, let me show you. If I choose this one, it's a little bit too wide and it looks funny. Um, so yeah, you can create things that look horrible with this. It's like, it's like it said, it's a, it's a, um, a, a test, like a prototype. All right, so here's our torso. Oh yeah, we can also pixel nudity uh, in the groin. You can modify, you can put your sex organ there. If you're a dude, uh, you can put on um, pubic hair. Uh, guys, this is a game about drawing. You're gonna have to get uh, used to nudity. Okay, whatever. All right, let's put some legs on this little fella. Um, there's also naked women, if, you, if you're more into naked women. So it's all good, it's all good. Um, there we go, that's our little character. Okay, let's next up, it's uh, outfit. So we're gonna to create a new outfit and you can put different articles on. And you kinda should choose ar articles in the, how you would put them on or how they're layered one on top of each other. So uh, there's uh, all this pre-made stuff. You can also create new stuff. Usually you can choose one of the pre-made ones. Um, and there's t-shirts going different sizes depending on what kind of body type you chose uh, if you choose a different type it's just gonna look funny so I'm an ectomorph I should choose small t-shirts and I should choose small boxer briefs because if I choose let's say the medium ones it just looks like weird um, so yeah this is uh, it should eventually match what body type you did you have right now you have to be very specific at what you choose that's just how it is, because uh, it's a prototype. I'm gonna put on some shoes. I'm just gonna go with other red shoes, because I'm gonna put jeans over it. So I want, here's some jeans for small body size. So I want the jeans to go over the, over the shoes. Uh, so that's why I'm just doing it in the right order. Later on, you should be able to drag and drop uh, to rearrange this but right now we don't have that so let's put a t-shirt I could use my my uh, whatchamacallit my fast t-shirt but let's let's go in my official what's not official this uh, fix um, ZX Spectrum t-shirt that's pretty much how I look like um, all right done and that's me i have now made my character so i'm gonna create you are ordering the construction of this agent it will become available for behavior setup firm uh, you race from the workstation and head out to the platform that overlooks the assembly line you stare into the vast hall the machines work tirelessly to create parts for new more, more sophisticated machines it's a new kind of life cycle can now continue east to behavior setup to finish your character. So, like we said, we go keep on going east um, and uh, use the next terminal. So, behavior setup is an isolated room at the east and at the east end of the manufacturing hall. Machine noises are replaced with hush, hushing fans as supercomputers run machine learning algorithms and behavior simulations. Several workstations are lined up in the middle with behavior assessment rooms in the background. So, let's use the terminal. Sit down in the terminal, 
and log in. So behavior setup, just like the other one, is in early prototype stage. And most of the attributes you will set will not have effect on gameplay until later in development. So here's our um, retro agent. Right now it's a draft um, because we didn't choose anything. So here's four different characters, four different categories: personality, activities, environment, and perks. Let's just go one by one. Um, so here we have the personality. There's 16 of them. It's kind of like character class, like mage and all that stuff. Um, mage, war warrior, rogue from RPGs. And if you know your Myers Brig personality type, you can find one. Like I am very close to. I changed a little bit. Personalities do change. I used to be ENTP. Um, now I'm also ENFP or ENFJ, actually. So everyone is a little bit of. All this is just like a binary. It's just like, a, like a preset. Uh, you can just create your own class, like in Elder Scrolls games, which we're gonna do right now. So this is if you just wanna get a quick start. And there's all these different, um, this five axes that we're gonna look at through creating our own uh, personality. So select traits under each of the five axes. Bars will indicate agent's personality signature. So we have different templates if you really wanna quickly start, like adventurer and it gives you stuff for you. Introvert or show off. Um, competitive, boisterous, dominant. Uh, but we're just, I'm just gonna reset here. I'm just gonna create them on my own. So you go here and then it gives you a list of adjectives and either they push you to one side or the other side. And you don't have to set most of them. You just set the ones that are very, um, uh, very much like you. So let's say I'm pretty competitive when it comes to games. Um, boisterous when I talk, um, serious, nothing that super else specifies me. Then we have independence and cooperation, emotions and stability. We have spontaneity and versus order, and then we have progress versus tradition. So that's my personality signature, very e extroverted kind of energy. Um, a lot of order, organized, and very progressive. Um, so that's that's our little personality. Next up, activities. So here again, we also have uh, pre-made activities to just kind of give you an idea. So let's say that you're, an, um, let's say I'm career switch, preparing for a move into game development. You are very serious in improving your craft. So they have different amounts of time, how much you spent on drawing or how much you would want to spend on drawing. Um, this one, some people have jobs, some people have school, some people have both. Like you can go full in and just, shit, I'm just gonna work 40 hours on drawing. But let's just create our own. So it starts off, add meaningful activities that the agent wants to focus on and set desired time. Include commute time in a month. So I sleep pretty much, let's say seven, let's say eight hours a day. Uh, I love my job, which is going to Pixar Academy. So I work a lot of it. I work every day actually. So usually if you're just like a normal worker, you would do 40 hours a week, but you also include commute time, so you're probably closer to 50. But me, I work every day, also on weekends, because I love this, and I probably work around 9, 10 hours a day. Let's do 10 hours. School, I'm not going to school at all. And drawing, let's say my goal would be to at least draw for an hour for every day. Or every, yeah, for me, I, that'd be pretty cool. If I draw for an hour every day, that'd be to put, you know, into learning, not just working on, because I draw for my job, but let's say that I put one hour a week, uh, one hour per day to just actually improving. So playing the, this is pretty much playing the game. Um, what else do I do? I do gymnastics. About, I train for like, I guess we go to eight, I go four hours twice a week. Let's do eight hours total per week. What else do I do? I play video games, or at least I would want to. Um, let's say that I want to play, I don't know, five hours a week. And so now it gives you when you've and I pretty let's let's say that that's it. Um, now let's do one more. What else do I do? I do um, I don't know. Oh yeah, I watch movies. Let's let's see the, at least one movie a week. So let's I watch Harry Potter. I watch La La Land. So I, it's something that I love to do. So these are my three activities that I spend some significant time on. And um, and these are just like activities. Don't enter like I'm going shopping or. Like if you spend time with family, enter that if it's a significant thing in your life. But you're gonna see in a moment. So here you get an analysis of how you, so you know, you everyone has 160 hours in a week. 
and then depending on how much you sleep you have 112 hours left and then I spent 70 hours of my job so there's 42 hours left and so I have that's how much I have to spend on activities there's 23 hours uh, on activities and means I have 19 hours left in a week so the agent has 19 extra hours available in a week or 2.7 per day and this is probably too low to be able to deal with everything else in life consider adjusting your expectations all right so this actually tells me like yeah in three hours I don't even have three hours a day to cook like to eat food to go shopping and all that so it's probably a little bit too it's not gonna work out so I go back and revise so I could work a little bit less uh, or I could spend yeah because I do want to play I could play less video games um, but let's say I'm just gonna let's maybe nine hours per day which should be uh, good enough even eight hours if I work every day but let's say nine hours um, and so my new math I have 26 hours left that's 3.7 per day that's more manageable it's probably on the low end of manageable uh, but it's manageable probably uh, under five hours is pretty low all right done so that's my activities next up environment very important for how you um, how you live so First of all, how cluttered is the environment the agent lives in? It's pretty messy around here. And I actually prefer it to be minimal. Like, I love when there's nothing there. Uh, so the game can then help me to give tasks to change my environment to how it's ideal for my productivity. Some people like, uh, like chaos. It's just, you know, have a lot of stuff everywhere and just maybe that's get your creative juices flowing. So be honest with yourself. Um, and it's not a negative thing. If it's messy or chaos, if you prefer it, that's fine. Um, so I, I like it minimal and there's also people what kind of people are in your life uh, and there's different scenarios that are gonna change so for example meeting at Atropolis a good friend you made on the internet is applying to Atropolis Academy of Art with you so uh, they're actually gonna meet you there or um, let's say that somebody from your family inspires you to do art um, break away this one has no support for from his family so he's trying to make a new life for himself so you can start with any of these kind of presets or you can create your own and so you just add people uh, significant people to your that have a significant impact so you can choose relationship types um, mainly it's just friends but if you're like mom like I have a dad and he we stay in touch weekly uh, but they live on the other side of the world so I only communicate on the internet and you know they're whatever they don't really mind they don't do art and they will not join me when I go to the academy um, and then but let's say I have friends that I live with so I'm gonna choose friend so these are my roommates um, I see them every day they are not roommates roommate is you're actually gonna share a room housemate is like if you have your own place so let's say that you're in dorms maybe you have a roommate there um, and you know you have to deal with that in your life and so how much do they support the engines? They're pretty supportive. And they uh, like what I do. Um, this person does art as well. Actually, they're sponsored. They're like, they are my patrons. So I could do a sponsor. They really believe in me. So um, yeah, they don't do art though. Um, they will not join me. You could create that kind of scenario. So anyway, so let's just leave it at that for this tutorial. You can create more people. And it will become more uh, developed later on. Okay, so that's our environment. And last but not least, there's perks. Kind of like in Fallout, you can choose stuff depending on what kind of personality you choose for yourself. So some of them have their requirements met and are available, some of them are not, depending on what kind of stuff you chose. So what's available for me? Dad and job, because uh, I have a job uh, and you would, and then it explains what would happen. So for the dead end job, you would get um, less energy points and more motivation points. And right now you have no idea how this works. So I know it's a little bit confusing or you wouldn't really know what this entails. So just read the description. So your work is sucking your soul, but gives you one more reason to change your life around, uh, which is totally not true. So I'm not gonna choose that. Um, you gain motivation points from lack of physical things. I definitely like to have as little things as possible. So I do wanna get, mo I get motivated if I don't have a lot of stuff around me. So that's what this perk does, no free time can do multiple days in a row uh, game days in a row so if you choose no free time you can you can play multiple days in a row you can stack them uh, which will make sense later on but you if you have any leftover points when you apply them it won't lower your motivation for this makes no sense right now 
Um, Rest and Souls, you have too many passions to pick just one. Da Vinci would be proud, definitely like me. So I, it will give me one extra interest slot, uh, but will slower down my interest development. And I'm also organized, definitely. It will give me less random events and more organizational tools. I love that. Uh, yeah, like I said, you will not have an idea how this works out, but uh, you can change them at any time. You can come back and just change them. Uh, so you can play around with them. Cool. And that is it. We have created our agent. Let's complete it. And it will become ready for deployment. You feel a rush of excitement as you press the complete button. Did you make the right decisions? Where will this path take you? And the door leading east will get you to the start of your journey. So let's go east. To the status chamber holds a line of glass vats that stretch from floor to ceiling. Cybernetic bodies are suspended in them, the density of the liquid balanced exactly to have them floating without weight. Alright, some sci-fi shit going on over here and there's a vat holding retro and a control panel. So let's look at retro. Retro is suspended in the vat with their eyes closed, looking peaceful given that they're a piece of machinery. You can activate the agent by using the control panel. So let's use panel. The control panel asks to pair with your sync device. Which agent do you want to sync with? Okay, let's do retro. You establish a connection to the control panel and a symbiotic link which retro gets added to your sync device. As the agent's brain boots, the avatar shortly opens its eyes and meets its gaze with yours. Holy shit, there's like a moment going on. You feel a profound sensation as you look at each other as if you were looking in the mirror. The eyes close and the control panel indicates that deployment has started. Bubbles start firming, forming in the vat and the body slowly ascends towards the ceiling. And now Panzer says, hey, do you copy? You realize Panzer is calling you over the neural link. Yeah, yes, good. I just got confirmation of a new agent being linked to our system. It will take some time for us to get to set up the agent's environment the way you designed it. No problem, I'm very excited. Why don't you head back to Retronator headquarters and meet me in the Lens of Illusion Center. We'll go over the details of what happens next. Alright, I'll see you soon. So let's go into the hallway. You enter an anatomy hallway to try and see west along the length of the building, allowing you to reach behavior setup in the north and the status chamber further northeast. So let's go west, back into the lobby. Let's go out to the entrance, go to Mission Bay. Um, let's take the train all the way up to Moscone and go up and then northeast and then west. Now we're back in the cafe. Let's go to through co-working and down and into the oh yeah so here in the basement if you go lens of illusions you're already inside uh, the center but panzer is actually outside so let's talk to panzer hi how are you doing today i'm back to play the game got the usual room is right for you feel free to head over anytime so let's go inside into our room sit in the recliner chair sit down and activate your sync device operator and now I have the choice to go into the loader or to sync with retro. And so let's sync with retro and end this video. Actually, let's go through the loader because um, you can also go to the loader to to show to look at the TV. And so let's use the TV. Uh, and here's my character. So here I can find link. Now that means you delete them. Uh, syncing means syncing means you go into them. So let's check that out. You find yourself nowhere. Everything is pitch black. Possible exits are none. You see nothing. So there's pretty much nothing I can do. Um, yep. Oh, you hear an illegible utter. Could this be retro? Let's look at retro. Can't do that. Maybe you should try telling him to wake up. All right. Let's do wake up. Retro says, mm -hmm. hello, time to wake up. Hello. One more minute. Hey, wake up! Alright, alright! Retro opens his eyes and you can now look around. And Pixar Academy to be continued in episode Back to School coming soon. This is the end of episode 0. And this is where the game will actually start. And that's it for this episode. You can follow development on Patreon, on my blog. Um, if you go to posts, here you have our design and code posts, what's going on with the development. You can click Pixel Art Academy to just filter it down to Pixel Art Academy that blog. Otherwise, there's also some Retronator updates. Here, I explain how everything is going, and you don't have to 
become a patron. Uh, just click because you've already played the game, you've already pre-ordered. Uh, you can if you want to, but otherwise just click. There's going to be a follow button here. Just click it and you will get email updates of every other updates. They're all public. They're all meant for you to know how the game is going. Um, if you ever want to go back, you just go to Big Start Academy. It's just going to restart this whole scene. And you can talk to operator, like they said, uh, to give you... And you can, you know, go back to the loader or take an exit to go back out where you were. And so if you need to do some more stuff, um, you know, create your character, change things around, you can go out and... Or if you wanted to up upgrade or stuff like that, you can now walk around. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for um, the episode zero. Took one year to develop, pretty much to do all the text adventure engine of all this walking around, all the people talking to you, all this stuff, uh, game saving, all those little terminals that you can edit your character. So yeah, it's been a long time and now I'm super excited to actually start working on episode one where you will start drawing. There is also a prototype for the for that episode already out and you should go to, I'm going to link that below. It's called the study guide. Um, I'm going to show you the table of contents. So there's a, so this is the Pixel Art Academy study guide and it has all these learning materials that we're going to use in the game already written. Uh, just two more levels are not done, but the artwork and the process level, the more important ones for drawing, are all already here. It's like a draft, it's a draft, so it's not public yet, but you can already read. And there's daily activities, which is um, also gives you things to do if you want to learn how to, how to play, how to draw right now. So I'm going to link that in the description. Uh, there's When you start this, uh, just go to the introduction first, where you're going to set everything up at the start and just kind of an explanation of what's going on, what's um, what the Pixel Art Academy study guide is. It gives you some pretty pictures and then tells you how you should set up your practice so that this will actually work out for you. So yeah, I hope you're gonna, if you, I hope you like the, the playthrough so far. Uh, join me on Patreon to see what's going on and um, I will see you there. Cheers.